What we're doing now is we're going to pull the Ludlow plunger and clean it to show you the proper cleaning technique that I use on it. This is your mouthpiece shield. Whenever you're pulling the plunger, you always want to put this on there. Otherwise, you get little burns like these or war wounds, as my wife calls it. What I've done is pull the front pin. Now I'm pulling the middle pin. And all the time I get questions about, what if you drop your pin in the metal, what's gonna happen? Well, that's what's gonna happen. It's just gonna sit there and float. It's sitting right here. So what I do, is I take my trusty needle nose pliers, I let it heat up a little bit. Take my trusty needle nose pliers, and I take it out and drop it. And that gets most of the metal off of it. And it can sit right there, there it is. That will knock most of the loose metal off of it. Then you can clean it up after it cools off. So once that's done, we want to take our plunger lever and move it over to the side so it's out of the way. We're going to take our plunger handle. We'll put it on the plunger, push our pin through. And then we're going to kind of twist and pull up as we twist, and that gets it out of the machine. Now, if you can see the plunger, it's quite dirty. And that's what we're pulling it out for so we can clean it. When you pull it out, take a rag and kind of wipe off what you can. And then if you have a vise, you can use that. If you don't have a vise, you can get a little pair of country boy vise like I got. I use when I'm on the road. You want a pair of heavy gloves if you got them. If you don't, you can get a rag and double and triple it over because this is very hot and then turn it upside down. As you turn it upside down, you're getting rid of metal that's inside of it and we're going to clamp this to the side of the to the mouth to the uh let low that acts as my vice now i've got some 220 grit sandpaper that's in strip form i just tear off a piece i fold it double so it's a little bit stronger and I do what my wife calls a chubby checker, just do the twist. And you wanna get all the way top to bottom and you'll get all the way around. You wanna make, make it shiny, but leave a little black on it. You wanna get down to the metal, but not take all the black off because then you're taking some of the metal off. Some of these are dirtier than others and they take a little more. If you do it regularly like you're supposed to, you don't get this bad. You also want to clean this top portion. This actually has a chunk of metal on it right there. And we're going to knock that off. In lieu of a hammer, I want to use the butt end of a crescent wrench because this metal should be off, it should be flat. There's a piece there. Now 
we have our trusty skimmer. We want to skim the top of the crucible and get the dirt and crud off of it. The reason for doing this is so you don't push this dirt up into the throat like you like uh, it's just basically the same as a linotype throat on theirs. It just has a little opening to get up to the mouthpiece and it will clog up and cause you problems. Now at this point, what I would do if I could find it was there's a reamer that looks like your plunger, but it has slits in it. And you put your handle on it and you put it in here. You have to let it heat up. You can't just shove it in cold because it will lock up on you and then you'll be getting it out just like a stuck plunger. So you let it heat up for a while, you put a little oil on it, and then you ream out the hole. It goes back and forth, up and down, to clean the hole out just like we cleaned the plunger. But I couldn't find theirs here, so we just have to do with an explanation at this point. Now what we do, we grab our plunger again. Put it back in the handle and do the same thing with it. We have to let it sit for a little bit. You can't just cram it back down into the hole or you will get into trouble. LubriClean is the black oil that you want to put onto the plunger before you put it back in. Uh, it's a special oil made by Ludlow that's good for high temperatures. It also has some cleaning properties in it so that it helps keep everything clean and moving freely. So we're gonna do this without the, the uh, oil. But what I would do is put a little oil on this and then just rub it all around the plunger and on the bottom. And then you put this back into the hole and do not force it. Just let it find its own way and just let it sit there. You don't wanna force it in if you force it It'll get stuck and you'll be having to take a crowbar and a couple of tube of force to get it out. Okay, we did find a can of the True Luber Clean Oil. So I'm going to take this back out. What I want to do, it's a black, thick, nasty looking oil. You take it, rub it, coat your plunger real well. It does smoke, it does stink a little bit, but you get used to it, my line of work. There we go. Let's sit there and heat up a little bit. That oil is getting harder to find, so people are using other things. Uh, there's some people using a steam oil, which is a clearer looking oil. It's not as black as this, but it seems to work okay. There's some other ones that people came up. There's one called Crater 2, made by Texaco, that people are using. But to me, it smells like old coal forge at my granddad's when I used to turn the bellows. Smells like burning coal. It's used in the train industry to lubricate their axles. So maybe they made it out of the coal they burned. I don't know. But so we take that. When it goes in, the plunger should be free enough that it floats. There we go. That means that it's clean and free. So we line up our rod with our stud in the front, pick the arm back up and put it over that. Then I like to put the middle pin in first. And then Clean this one up that I dropped in there accidentally.
and then slowly push down on the front of it. And put your pin in the front. And put your lock lever down. You can take this off, and that's some of the metal that would have squirted up and got on your arm or whatever. It will melt off, so don't worry about it. Just have to give it a minute or so. And when it melts, you can just wipe it off like so. Now, if you get too much oil in the, in the well and it's smoking and stinking and your wife's coming out hollering at you and all that good stuff, just take a paper towel and just stick it in there and it will soak up the excess oil but it won't burn unless you leave it in there for a very long time. Then it'll start burning. It'll turn brown, but it will actually soak up the oil that's in there, the excess. And what we just did was we cleaned the plunger on the lead low and then oiled it and put it back together. And that's that lesson for today.